Hello, Internet! I have figured out this built for short keeper that I think is pretty busted. And a team as well. Let's just take a look at the stats right away. We got short keeper, 230 energy regen. You're gonna laugh at me. <laughs> but I have ways to get 250 later, okay? Just calm down. Here's the unique part, though. I'm running crit damage build on my short keeper. 240 of them. I'll just throw in the reasoning for you right away, right? Reason number one, she heals so much that I think it's just enough. Reason number two, if you use the unique intro skill with short keeper after her alts area turned into a golden color, the super, uh, the superno stellar realm, this intro skill by short keeper is guaranteed to crit. And it scales based on her HP, which is why I have extremely high health as it is the case with most healers. And I have crit damage as well to maximize the discernment. Not that I need more HP or healing bonus anyway, I heal enough. Well, yeah, to address the 230 energy region though, well, firstly, there's a new echo in town. We got policy and no return. Now this guy gets you 10% bonus energy regen after you use it. Of course, the attack buff as well. It's freaking perfect for sure, Keeper. And also it gives me more energy regen. But even then, I'm missing 10. I'm only 240, which we'll get from the tower versity buff, yeah? All right, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit here. Considering my sure Keeper is just on variation, I feel like this should be pretty common. If you get your own weapon, you're gonna easily get 250. Otherwise, though, you have to max everything, and yeah. And with all that said, I pre-recorded this run right here, and at the same time, I'll try to explain to the best of my abilities, right? Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you play Shore Keeper, and this is one of the best teams for it. You're gonna think, wait, Jinsei? That goes terrible in this team. We have the same element with Spectro on Shore Keeper. You would be right. Well, it's kind of the fact that Jinji gives enough coordinated attacks anyway that I'm gonna max out my forte on Jinsei, no matter what anyway. Yeah, just allow me to show you how insanely fast this team is, okay? The first thing you'll have to do is take note of the normal combo Shore Keeper. I'm gonna have to slow this down. This is how the normal combo goes. We're gonna do a bunch of basic, four basic attacks, in fact, to max out your forte. Now, the moment your forte is maxed down here, you're gonna hold your charge attack and use your E at the same time, which I did right here. Both at the same time. What that does is it's gonna turn your Q, which you generate per basic attack, into butterflies that attacks the enemy. Doesn't matter if you don't understand what I'm saying, okay? It's confusing. At the same time that happens, your E goes as well, which also summons more butterflies. All of them is gonna attack the enemy at once. TLDR, you save time. Just, just try and do this, okay? Yeah, after of which, I'm gonna have to do the same thing again. We're charging up basic attacks, four of them, in order to max out my forte. Now that I have my max forte again, I'm gonna hold my attack in order to turn everything to a butterfly, and this time, Instead of using my E, which is not available, I'm using my ult to just not wasting time, right? We're, we're using our time to do the most things. And boom, there comes the ultimate. I'm also using my echo as well. That gets me the attack buff. That gets me the energy regen buff. And here is where we can speed things up. What I'll just show you is pretty much most of the things that she does already. And this is where I go to JG. JG is going to do her normal shenanigans, right? The whole get her forte max, use E, use one basic, E, E, E again, into the ultimate right here and our echo as well. And at this moment as well, you'll notice the field is currently purple in color. That is from Shorekeeper's ultimate, right? I can't really explain everything because there's so many things happening. Just know that initially Shorekeeper's um, field is like a bluish color. It turns purple the moment your ally comes in. So Jeji came in, it is now purple. I actually gain crit rate buff right now. And after Jeji finishes her shenanigans, we come in with another intro by Jinsi and here the field turns from purple to gold. You're gonna notice that, right? Yeah, look at this. Especially the ceiling there, it's all gold now. This gold gets gets me crit rate and crit damage buff, both of them. All for Jinsi, right? Which is nuked them for 63k, which is not a lot, it's our ulti. And at this current moment, my Jinsi went from 67 crit rate to like 79, and went from 242 crit damage to 260 something crit damage. It is quite a big increase. Not to mention with the outro skill of Shorekeeper, we do also get the damage deepen or the damage amplification by 15%. And that is the maximum of the buffs that I can get currently, so my Jinsi just goes crazy, right? I'm gonna try and like pause less now, and have you guys enjoy the gameplay, right? This nuke is not maximum forte, so it's gonna be extremely weak. It's 86, and here we have something cool. I don't know if you guys played with her yet, but yeah, it's so hard to explain what she does because she does so much. If Shorekeeper's field is still up, which it is right now, and I trigger Shorekeeper's intro skill, which Jinsi helps trigger, right? I'm gonna activate this unique animation into Shorekeeper's unique intro skill named Discernment. So what happens is right here. She comes in with a unique animation, it's kind of distorting, it's cool as hell. I'm gonna attack them, it's guaranteed crit, 6.5k a pop. That is obtained from high health and crit damage as well. It's not nothing, right? It's not high though, for sure. And the moment she does this, the field disappears for you to like end your damage cycle. Now you're gonna repeat from step one, four basics into a charge attack with E at the same time, four basics into R as well, 
Or if you max out a Concerto early, feel free to just use your R right away, as I did there. Go back to JRG, and JRG does her shenanigans too. And the final thing to take note of, it's truly the final thing, okay? I don't know how this video is gonna make sense, but I'm, I'm hoping it does help somebody. I'm not able to showcase it here, but I'm gonna show it on screen right now. After Shorekeeper's outro skill for an ally, they can actually recover themselves if they get attacked by an enemy. So if they get knocked back, they can actually recover themselves and still do the perfect dodge if Shorekeeper has just done her outro skill. Now, there is a limit. It's only up to five times, but this helps you so much because you don't have that anti-interruption. You're crutching on this instead to avoid wasting time, right? Well, with that, truly, that's all she does. I'm gonna stop yapping now. I'm gonna stop, uh, you know, pausing as well. Here comes Joji with her shenanigans. She has her R right at the perfect timing. We're gonna use our R as well as our Q. Go back to Gen C. Golden aura around us. We got crit rate, crit damage buff. Like, there's just so many things happening. I can't even commentate much. That's why I opted for pre-recording. Uh, pre 210k there into 63k. I'm critting every time because I got a crit rate buff. That's why it's so good. 6.5 for the discernment. And it's just going to be a repetition of this, right? We're just keep doing this. And notice how fast Shorekeeper does her LT. Like, we keep getting LT back. Keep getting the Concerto up as well. So fast to the point where Jeji's R is still in cooldown right now. This is not really even a good thing. I ideally shouldn't even have, like, to wait for a cooldown in LT. But that's just what I mean. I think a shortkeeper is just too quick. So there are better um, teams instead of this that can fully utilize her. But damn, that is a lot of damage. 210,000. This itself, though, is very decent enough, right? Yes, I'm missing, like, 2-3 um, seconds on the CD, but it's not that big a deal. We have Shorekeeper back again with the gosh darn LT. Go back to GRG. Same shenanigan. I'm just gonna skip to the end. We did end up with the Shrun, um, getting it to 3-star, right? So, where is the damage? Um, uh, yep, there we go. Of Out of anyone, out of everyone, Jeji was the person that did the final bit. And that's, again, thanks to the crit rate, crit damage buff. My Jeji has, like, 60-something crit rate, not high. Buff that I was short Keeper, you quit a lot more, and that is like the minute margins that you might need to clear things in time. Like, I think yeah, I was pretty close. I was six seconds above the third star. So I could have gotten two stars if I just missed a crit somewhere, right? It's annoying. That's the RNG of the game. It's not 100%. I'm going to farm them, but with Shorekeeper, though, one of the most unique things she can do being buffing both your crit, it just helps you get so much more consistency, especially with something like Gen C, where you have to nuke and you have to crit on that one instance. I kept doing like 210 k damage one missed crit it could have been like 60k instead so it's really damn helpful man and after all that we have discernment as well that does quite good damage it's not nothing it did contribute itself to like the final five seconds had i had less stats maybe just more healing bonus then sure i can survive better which i don't need to like i was just chilling right my hp bar is not even going down or i could invest them in crit damage which is what i did today with gosh darn shorekeeper right invest them in um, crit damage so i mean that much more damage but hey my new margin sometimes Times does matter. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the best teams I've ever tried. It is so smooth. I actually prefer this than Verena's for the fact that if I ever get hit, I can recover myself. That is so good. But with Verena, though, you don't have that. Although with Verena, you also don't have the pesky area to work in, which I'm going to show you what I mean. If there is an issue at all with our wife here, it's depending on the bosses, it might get annoying. I have an Encore run right here, which my Encore is not ready. But yeah, speaking of which, like, you can slot her in any team. I'm using her here instead of the use of Verena. We've got Sandhog, we've got Encore, but mines are not really built well. And this is what I mean, though. When the bird flies, yep, yeah, yeah, this exact moment. When the bird decides to fly away, sometimes he gets out of my field. Like, it does happen sometimes. Very rarely, though. But that is something Verena would never, like, have to go through. But at the same time, Verena does not have to double crit buff, right? And on screen right now, you see, like, a pretty decent team as well. We're using Shorekeeper, Sanhua, Encore, and doing the same, you know, usual um, combo, right? Now, my Encore is not doing enough damage because mine's not that built well. We're getting the job done anyways, for sure. And the cycle is the same. I'm using Encore to, like, go DPS them down. Discernment comes in. I go for four basics into charged attack into E again. And then do it again. Again, use our R when my Consoto is max. Use our Q to maximize the buffs. Go to Sanhua, instantly use everything. Bang with a charge attack. And I should get my, you know, intro skill with Encore. Get the golden um field from Shorekeeper. Now I have crit rate, crit damage buff on Encore. Maximum damage goes in. I'm critting nearly every time. Look at that, right? I say crit, but I'm really not doing enough damage for critting, man. I should be doing 7k per hit, but I'm not. Gotta improve on my Encore, eh? And yep, that is how the team will work out. I don't think I could 3-star this. I think it was a 2-star clear, but... We're looking at an encore that looks like this. Like, come on. 
I have less than 200 crit damage on here. Like, what? I'm in the middle of building them, okay? Just just allow it. But for now, this video is about Shorekeeper, not Encore. This is one of the best builds I've ever tried. It's one of the most silky smooth characters I've ever played with as well. You get some failsafe for the evasion. But you know what? This video feels like it's all over the place, which I'm still learning. There's a lot. Of, there's, there's actually a pretty high skill ceiling to Shorekeeper. But regardless, though, for anyone that has pulled Shorekeeper and you're wondering how to play her or how to build her, consider this build, eh? The healing bonus, although, is good, but some Sometimes I feel like if I'm overhealing with my team, I don't need it. Might as well put anything else. But do know that the standard option is to go healing. So in case where someone's dying, you still have to heal up. If sure keeper someone can't keep your team alive, which with a crit damage a main stat um echo is certainly harder. That would just be dumb, right? So you know what I'm gonna tell you? Go for whatever has better substats, man. This one wrote me energy regen, just so happens I needed it. So you know what? Screw it. I went for it. It also made sense. And I ended up with this sure keeper. Top, top tier character. I I genuinely think everyone should get her. This will make your life easier and have a second Varina. I have two Varinas now, basically. Oh, God. Like, the world just opened up for me. I can build so many teams now. But yeah, that will be all for today. I'll be making a guide soon that really breaks everything down deeper, but hopefully this video still helped you out with, like, you know, impression-wise now. Now we're for today. Subscribe for rewarding ways crud. I'm doing a lot more of them. Comment down below as well. Any ideas you might have, sometimes to take your comment and make a video right out of them. And that is all. Take care.